Hello, everyone. How are you? You might have noticed, what is this video? It's not a TFC, although I'm on the Financial Confession set. Um, I just happen to be in the office today. Nor is this a video essay. Um, so who is she? What's she doing here? Um, and I actually wanted to jump in and talk to you guys, which as you can see by the title, um, we're just, it's, you know what, picture me. I'm a youth pastor at, you know, a Christian summer camp. If any of you guys have also been to one of those, um, I'm pulling up, I'm flipping the chair around um, and sitting on it backwards. And I'm here to have a little rap session, guys. Like I'm here to have a heart to heart. Um, shout out Young Life. Some of you guys who follow me on social media might have seen that I posted a little mm -hmm. open letter um, kind of talking about some tough experiences that I had in 2023. Um, you can see it here. I will also link to it down below if you prefer to read, but we're going to basically cover most of what I covered in uh, that letter. But basically your queen, Chelsea Fagan, had herself a little bit of a menti B um, late last year, a little mental, a little, a little breakdown, little baby breakdown. I am someone, as you might know, if you are an OG TFD watcher, I have, um, I'm actually uh, diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. Uh, um, which is a diagnosis I received almost a decade ago. So I don't know if it's like, is that a subscription that auto renews every year? Like I don't personally know if those just last forever, but at least 10 years ago, um, that was the case for me. And I was having at the time severe insomnia from my anxiety. Like I would go days without sleeping, not literally, but I would go days like not having more than a few hours at a time of sleep. And so I ended up cycling through basically every, um, over-the-counter and prescription sleep medication you can imagine um, to try and, you know, deal with that. Um, and I ended up finding the right one for me um, over some trial and error. And I ended up uh, after about, you know, a, a little over a year of, you know, really important lifestyle changes, personal and professional changes, I ended up um, being able to wean myself off of that medication. And for the past, I would say eight years, I've generally been in a really good mental health space. You know, I, a a lot of the more you know acute symptoms of my anxiety, especially insomnia, really haven't been much of an issue for me. Like, am I going to say I don't hit a unisom every now and again? No, that would be a lie. But I'm definitely living very differently now than I did eight years ago. And I think looking back, and this is part of why for me so often the mental health conversation um, really misses the contextual and economic factors that contribute to people's mental health. Like, don't get me wrong, access to therapy, access to the right medications, access to treatments, all of that is very important. But a lot of times I think we overlook the fact that people are in situations which almost by necessity will lead to really severe mental health outcomes. And at least for me, that is really the case. You know, for the eight years that I was doing really well from a mental health perspective, and this is not to say that things were perfect, right? Like I had definitely periods of high stress, I had bad things happen, all of that. But it was mostly very manageable with lifestyle changes. But I, in the past year, dealt with a level of professional stress that was so far beyond what I had ever dealt with in the eight-ish years prior, basically since starting TFD. And that sent my anxiety into a tailspin to the point that um, I had such a severe panic attack that I like called one of those like, um, you know, I don't know. So for those of you who live in New York City, I feel like there's always some medical startup that's like covered the subway in advertising of like little cartoon dancing pills and it's like you know zoom and you'll get a, a therapist in just 10 minutes or whatever like i was at a point because i had not been in regular therapy for like two years and prior to that i'd been in talk therapy um, maybe a year and a half but either way i was no longer seeing my regular therapist so although he probably would have taken me like i was in such an emergency state that i was like give me uh like a, a medical startup that will see me in the next 15 minutes basically um because my i was home alone at the time and i was like i couldn't regulate my breathing i couldn't regulate my heart rate like and this had been going on for some time but had reached a crescendo so i get on to the the phone call and I can laugh about it now. We're, we're a little ways out from this, but I get on the phone call, this poor woman. Now, listen, I'm sure she's seen it all, right? Like she's a doctor. She's probably seen worse than my situation, but I get on the call, tears streaming down my face, like full on mascara dripping down to my shirt, like heaving. And I'm just like, I think I need medicine. Um, and so it, the result of that was that I ended up with um, a prescription for the first time in my life. Um, 
uh, notably for uh, a, med- a medicine for panic attacks, which is a take as needed. It's something I don't have to take every day. Um, I have actually only taken these medications twice because they're basically like being hit with a tranquilizer dart, essentially. You're like, you know, an elephant in an enclosure who's gone a little wild and just gets, you know, the dart in your in your trunk or whatever, in your in your leg. Um, so I've only actually ended up taking it twice, but I carry this medication around with me everywhere I go. I'm like always shaking it like a maraca just to make sure I have it. It's become my comfort blanket to know that I have that if things get really bad. But, um, but I'm telling you this story because the reason my anxiety went off such a crazy cliff in 2023 is because we had a really difficult year at TFD financially. You know, we still ended the year. I mean, we We're a seven-figure business, right? That's important to be transparent about. Um, But we have a a pretty sizable staff that gets paid fairly. We have pretty competitive maternity leave. Everyone's on some kind of a mix of salary and commission. Um, And so it's, you know, to operate a business ethically, to compensate fairly is incredibly expensive. So even in earning, you know, a a solid amount of money, um, you know, we saw a lot of other changes to our business. We had clients that straight up didn't pay us this year who completely flaked on us and that we had to like go after with legal threats. Um, We had people who paid us months late when we were depending on that money. And here's the thing about running a business. It doesn't matter if your clients pay you months late. You still have to pay people on your end even if you don't have that money in the bank. Um, You know, we saw, for example, the events has always been a huge part of what we do. And pre-pandemic, it was almost all in person. Then the pandemic happened happened and everyone wanted to go to digital events. And now we see that there's a mix that's needed and neither one is really the sure bet that both of them used to be. So hugely fluctuating year for us financially. Um, And then on top of it, you know, we're still very much in a pandemic and in a recession and there are huge ways in which that impacts small businesses. But the government went from being like, here's, you know, some help to get you through the year and thanks for not laying anyone off. Like we got our employee retention credit for, you know, not laying anyone off during the pandemic. Um, But that, the PPP loan, all of the government aid, it's like, bye girl, you're on your own. Glad we're out of the pandemic now. Um, Spoiler alert, we're very much not. So for small businesses all over the country, it is just an absolutely brutal time where we are caught between a situation where the effects of this pandemic and the recession are still very much going on, but our government is treating it like it's over. And, you know, as a result, everyone in our company had to take uh, pay cuts. Um, luckily, we were able to keep it to 10% for non partners, um, but that's a humongous sacrifice. Um, we, uh, the partners, obviously took on more of a burden. I myself uh, just didn't take any salary of any kind for months on end, um, like for probably not the, not half the year, but close to it. Um, and then my husband and I personally loaned a substantial amount of money to the company um, to make sure that we could cover our costs while we waited to get paid um, because, you know, access to just free working capital right now as a business, the kinds of money that in better economic times can be really easy to access and most companies depend on to manage their cash flow because often you have to pay people before you get paid. That's gotten really expensive and hard to access. So, you know, it was either that or get stuck in a cycle of really predatory lending. And I say all of this being kind of on the other side of it. You know, last year was really hard. We've made a lot of changes and seen a lot of important growth going into 2024. We have a really solid plan for this year um, and things are a lot better. But for me on a mental and personal level, um, I look back at, you know, I say this not just to be really transparent about the finances of running a company. This is our 10th year in business and people in general, but especially entrepreneurs, especially people who are living under the, the unforgiving regime of hustle and entrepreneur culture, we have a tendency to really show the highlight reel. And there's a real reason for that, right? Like as a business, you never want to seem like you're in a bad position. That can affect, you know, your clients. That can affect, you know, the value of your business. That can have a real impact on the, you know, tangible value of the company. So you are very incentivized to share the good news and not be so open about the bad. But I do feel like it's really important to share the bad. But also kind of beyond that, part of that kind of like hustle entrepreneur bullshit is that 
for me personally, I'm the CEO. I'm also the majority owner of the company. I do have partners, but I am the majority owner and I'm the face of a lot of what we do. So from my mental health perspective, a huge part of the reason why I broke down as badly as I as I did during those stressful times was because I didn't even realize like I do other things, right? Like I have a lot of hobbies. I have, you know, I did my romance novel last year. I have other projects I work on. Um, but I still had a huge part of my personal worth, my self-worth and my self-image wrapped up in being not just a successful CEO on my own terms. Cause like, honey, I wasn't even getting paid. So like I was like not personally killing it uh, on a personal level, but also like to, to fail publicly, to let anyone down that depend that depends on this job. Like we have parents on the team, you know, we have people like most of our staff has been with us for years and years. Like that pressure of like, I can't fail myself. I can't fail all the people who follow this community who are part of what we've built. I can't fail the staff. Like that amount of pressure that I put on myself, like it was like completely unsustainable mentally. Like I, there were days when I was like, I'm throwing my laptop in the river and checking into a mental hospital because this is just not sustainable. And I think, especially as it pertains, and I think this applies to so many different types of work, um, but this is something that I think a lot of us deal with is finding the, the healthy balance between caring about something, working hard, doing your best, giving it as much as you can to the degree that you should give it, that you you know it's not worth doing something if you're not gonna put real effort into it. But there's a big difference between that and things that are out of your control. So much of our professional lives, whether you are an employee or you are an entrepreneur or you're a freelancer or whatever you're doing, so much of our professional lives is totally out of our control. Like us having clients that just straight up didn't pay us for months on end, like. It doesn't matter how hard I'm working or how hard any of our staff is working because they all work incredibly hard. If if things are just not adding up, if a pandemic happens that we didn't see coming and spoiler alert, we didn't see that coming. If clients don't pay us, if you know the community changes, whatever might happen, revenue changes, like that is not something that anyone can mentally take on and just overcome. And for me, the biggest lesson walking out of 2023 was like, I will take on the responsibilities of being a CEO, but I will not take on the identity of being a CEO. I'm coming to you if you are a part of our community, if you love our work, if you're on the journey of, you know, bettering your relationship with money and, you know, and your career and all of these other things, and you get a lot from our community and you support the way we operate as a business and, you know, the the business practices that we have. And I'm linking you guys in the description to a lot of the stuff that we write about, about from a more labor practices POV. The most valuable and important thing you could possibly do is to join our society at TFD. Um, We are moving in 2024 a huge portion of what we do every year into a members only thing, not because we like don't want everyone to access it. It's because we have to, on some level, practice being a sustainable business. And it's all the more important with how volatile the economy and society as a whole has been for the past four years that we have to prioritize that sustainability. So like, for example, every month we do a workshop on a different topic. Like this month, it's about organizing for the new year. Next month, I'm hosting one on um, increasing your income. Um, We're doing ones on budgeting. I had one on entertaining. Like every month is a different workshop, but our workshops are members only. Um, We have every video essay we do, we do a director's cut which is longer more in depth that's members only we're also going to be releasing them earlier every month so you have early access we also have uh our discord which is always popping people working to better their own finances we have our book club um that my colleague holly leads every month where you guys pick the book and it's usually about money or you know american society or whatever it might be um we have tons of other stuff i'm not even going to bore you with it um and it is 4.99 a month so very 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 reasonable we have it here on YouTube. We also have it on Patreon. So wherever you like to join and it's the same on both platforms.
systems, you get access to everything. Um, but yeah, that's really what we're prioritizing in 2024. And in part, being a member means that we get to keep our things like our video essays, our financial education stuff. Like we have um, a mini series on YouTube next month, all about first generation finances, uh, hosted by a uh, Latina creator who's going to be talking all about her personal uh, perspective and, and that topic. Being able to keep things like that free depends on us, you know, charging some for some of the work we do. But like I said, it's a hopefully, I think, very reasonable cost for all that you get access to. Um, and more importantly, it just really helps us be a sustainable business. If you can't afford to join or don't want to, that's totally fine too. But I wanted to make this video going into 2024 to just really be transparent with you guys about where we are. Like I have been, ironically, and it's not even ironic, right? Like I think my body was just like skirt. Like I got uh, shortly after um, <laughs> reaching a, my little breakdown, I ended up, I, I had already canceled my holiday travel uh, because I just like, I, I was like, I can't f in-laws no I'm kidding <laughs> I'm kidding I love my in-laws but they don't speak English so they'll never know I said that but um no I, I I we had canceled our holiday travel we had like pared down all of our plans because we were like I can't deal with this right now um and then lo and behold I got COVID and ended up in bed for a couple like a week and a half and then my husband got sick and then everyone it was just basically for the past month while everyone was partying for Christmas like I was just like in my pajamas convalescing um and on a forced uh, sort of meditative retreat. Um, and then I ended up going away for a few days with a friend for uh, kind of a little bit of R&R. &R. So either way, I've, you know, been really prioritizing making the changes that I need to, to um, be able to manage running the business with the, you know, stress that it entails. I'm being on medication of any kind, there's absolutely no shame in it. It was a little bit emotional for me to like get a, to walk my ass down to Dwayne Reed and get my prescription filled for the first time in so long because I felt like I had been really, you know, like, like I felt like I was like a, a guy on like a, uh, like a, a men's oriented podcast where I was like, all you need to do is like X, Y, and Z and you will be able to overcome any mental health problem. Like I was really... I was really making it work, but I think it's important to not only acknowledge when that's not working anymore, it's also important to, for us all to understand that like so much of our mental health crisis in America is economic in nature. And although I am very, very lucky in that my, my CEO problems did not impact my personal finances because I have other streams of income. My husband has income. We don't have children. We were able to not have that really touch our personal finances. Like I could go without a salary and that was okay. That is not the case for many people. But I did experience a level of professional and financial stress that many people are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it's worth really asking ourselves how much of these theoretically entirely in your head problems are hugely, hugely impacted by the situations that we're dealing with. So no shame on this side of the camera. I hope no shame on that side for if you guys are going through something, if you're a small business owner, freelancer, entrepreneur, and you've had a really rough couple of years, really rough 2023, right there with you. It is totally normal. Um, if you have, as a result of financial stress, been dealing with some mental health issues, I get you, I was right there with you and I know how hard it is. Um, and like I said, if you have loved this community, if you like what we do and would like to help us build an even more sustainable business and help us keep our financial education as free as possible, um, please become a member of our society. Everything you need is down below the video. Um, but if not, thank you for watching. Um, I'm really excited for 2024. Um, I am just, I am that girl in this cartoon. We are walking up the steps. My backpack is full of only good stuff. I'm leaving that trash in 2023. Um, onward and upward, I say. I'll see you very soon for our video essay this month. Bye guys.